Hi everyone. I'm going to take a few minutes to talk through an ultrasound guided fascia iliaca block in anticipation of our upcoming hands-on session. Let's take a second to just review the indications of the procedure. So the photo here on the right shows the distribution of analgesia from this block. So any patients that you have that have an intertrochanteric or ephemeral neck fracture or even a femoral shaft fracture would be a good candidate for this procedure. Any patient who has an isolated greater trochanteric injury or who has an acetabular or other pelvic fracture probably would not get relief from this block. This slide shows the anatomy relevant for the block. So we have lateral on the left side of the screen, medial on the right side of the screen. On the medial aspect of the patient, we can see our femoral artery and femoral vein. And then here we can see our major muscular landmarks. So we have the iliacus muscle here and then the sartorius muscle here. And notice this distinctive shape of the sartorius muscle, how it comes to a point here. We'll see that on the ultrasound images later in the slides. And then our two fascial planes that are relevant to the procedure are the fascia lata, which is superficial to the sartorius, and then the fascia iliaca, which runs between the sartorius and the iliacus muscle. And just beneath the fascia iliaca, you can see the femoral nerve and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, which are two of the three nerves that are affected by this block. So when we're doing this block, all we want to do is get our needle beneath the fascia iliaca into the same plane as the nerves so that we're injecting the medication into that same plane. And because we're using a larger volume of medication, the medication will spread out among that fascial plane and reach the nerves. Here are the supplies that you'll need for the procedure. So this here is one of the echogenic needles that we have that has tubing attached to it. These are located in the cart next to the suture material in the department. And I show it here flush through a saline with a couple of additional saline flushes, which we'll talk more about when we're looking at some clips of the procedure. You'll need a 30 to 50 cc syringe for your medication, a chlorhexidine swab, and a sterile ultrasound probe cover. If you don't have access to the echogenic needles, you can still make your own similar device. So shown here is just a spinal needle with two, or you can use more sets of tubing that you would hook up to an IV connected together, again, flush through a saline. When you're preparing to do a nerve block in the department, we did make an order set that has a lot of helpful information in it. It's the one that I have outlined here, not the two order panels that are above it, but the order set. If you're not sure that you're in the right one, it should look like this when you open it, um, which will have this table, which is pretty helpful to show you how much volume you should be looking to inject for each of these blocks. The order set will also prompt you to order the point of care ultrasound, and I'd really encourage you to save some clips while you're finding your landmarks and then also while you're injecting the medication. The order set will also walk you through medication choices and dosing as well. When thinking about doing the procedure, this blue rectangle on the screen shows where you're going to start off putting the ultrasound. So you're going to want to use the linear probe and put it below the inguinal fold in the orientation shown on the screen. You'll want to look for the femoral vessels and then move out a little bit laterally. And when we are doing the procedure, we're going to want to put the needle in on the short end of the probe so that we're seeing the needle in long axis. This is going to allow us to see, to see the entire length of the needle throughout the procedure and have really precise control over where we're injecting the medication. So this is a photo of the ultrasound image that you'll generate when you have the probe in that location. So lateral and medial are labeled on the screen. Um, here we can see the femoral artery. The femoral vein would be somewhere over here. It's not clearly seen in this image. So femoral artery. And then just next to it here, this hyperechoic circle is going to be the femoral nerve. Here we see our two major muscular landmarks. This is the iliacus muscle. And then this is that sartorius muscle with that pointed shape we talked about earlier. And then when looking for the fascial planes, the fascia lata is going to be right here, superficial to the sartorius. And the fascia iliaca will be just here between the sartorius muscle and the iliacus muscle. So here I have an image with those labeled on the screen. And then here are the fascial planes labeled on the screen. And then when we're doing the procedure, we're going to be bringing the needle in from the lateral aspect of the patient, oftentimes going through the sartorius muscle and advancing the needle tip just beneath the fascia iliaca. This video clip is going to show an example of a fascia iliaca block. So in the image you see on the screen, we've moved the ultrasound probe a little bit out laterally, so we're no longer seeing the femoral vessels over here. Um, we can see the iliacus muscle here, the sartorius muscle here, and then the yellow arrow on the screen is pointing to the fascia iliaca. And so as we start the video, we'll see the needle come in from the left side of the screen, 
and we'll see liquid being injected. And you can see that as the liquid is being injected, you can tell that you're in the fascial plane because the sartorius muscle is being lifted up off of the iliacus muscle, sort of as if the two muscles are being unzipped. And so usually when I'm doing this procedure, I'll initially have my needle hooked up to a saline syringe rather than the medication. And when I think I'm in the right plane, I'll have my second operator inject one to two cc's of saline. When you inject one to two cc's of saline, you'll get some hydrodissection of the tissues, which will give you better clarification of exactly where your needle is. If your needle's not in the right plane, for example, if it's in the sartorius muscle or within the iliacus muscle, you can make minor adjustments with your needle until you have it in the fascial plane. Have your second operator inject another one to two cc's of saline, verify that you actually are in the fascial plane and not within one of the muscles. And then once you know that you're in the correct plane, have the second operator switch out the saline for the medication and inject the medication into the plane. If you do those initial steps with saline rather than with medication, you won't have used up a few cc's of your medication just on getting into the correct plane. Just to contrast that, here's a clip showing the needle still too superficial. So in this clip, medial is on the right, lateral is on the left. You can see the sartorius muscle with that distinct pointed shape right here. And you can see the needle is still quite superficial. And when this person has a couple of cc's of liquid injected in, you can see that it's actually just dissecting the muscle fibers apart, but it's still bounded within the muscle right here. So if you saw this, you'd know that you, you would need to advance your needle a little bit deeper um, and then inject again to make sure that you're in the right plane. In thinking about some complications of the procedure, the most common one is just inadequate anesthesia. So if your needle wasn't in the right plane or if there perhaps was an adequate spread of the medication along that plane to reach the nerves. And then the most feared complication is local anesthetic systemic toxicity or LAST. Um, and so this would occur if the medication was injected into the patient's bloodstream. So some safety checks when considering last would be to have the patient on a cardiac monitor throughout the duration of the procedure. Another is to have intralipid ordered. So intralipid is the antidote for local anesthetic systemic toxicity. And so if you do use that nerve block order set, the order set will prompt you to order intralipid and it will help you with the dosing. Once it's ordered, a lot of times the nurses will bring it to the bedside. I, at a minimum, have the nurse verify that it's available in the Omni cell in the emergency department so that if we were to need it, we would know that it's readily available and that it doesn't have to come from central pharmacy. My last tip in preventing local anesthetic systemic toxicity is to find your needle tip every five cc's. So you can imagine if you're injecting liquid into a space that previously didn't have liquid, you're going to be shifting the structures around. And it's possible while you're injecting the liquid because of that shift that you lose sight of your needle tip. So what I'll have my second operator do while I'm doing this procedure is inject five cc's of liquid and stop. Make sure I can still see my needle tip, that it's where I want it to be. Adjust the probe if I need to, if I can't see the needle tip. Once I find it again, inject the next five cc's, stop, and repeat that process until I've injected the entire dose of the medication. And in that way, you can verify every step of the way that you're injecting the medication only exactly where you want to be. Thanks so much for listening. Please feel free to bring any questions, comments, concerns, experiences from the department to our upcoming hands-on session, and I look forward to seeing you all there.